fabricate electronic devices like uh, diodes and transistors semiconductors are used widely nowadays silicon germanium gallium arsenide these are some of the popular semiconductors in electronics industry nowadays semiconductors are materials whose conductivity is low now point is how to increase the conductivity what are the possible ways to increase the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor this requirement arises several times in the fabrication in the development of electronic devices there are two possible ways two possible methods by which conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor can be raised one way is addition of impurity atoms there are two types of impurities n type impurities p type impurities n type impurities give rise to generation of free electrons whereas p type impurities give rise to generation of holes rising free electron concentration or hole concentration naturally rises increases conductivity in case of silicon or germanium semiconductors n type impurities are pentavalent examples for these materials are phosphorus arsenic antimony and uh, p type impurities are trivalent materials examples for these materials are aluminum boron gallium indium notice addition of impurities rises carrier concentration but this rises only in uh, one type of carriers either electron free electron concentration increases or hole concentration increases not both another way by which conductivity of a semiconductor can be raised is by excitation a semiconductor slab may be excited by some radiation electromagnetic radiation or by light or by heat when excited what happens is energy goes into the semiconductor and uh, this energy rises increases 
फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड फुल कंसंट्रेशन बोथ कैरियर्स देयर कंसंट्रेशन गोस एंड कैरियर कंसंट्रेशन कंसंट्रेशन गो अप naturally conductivity goes up so excitation is a way one way by which conductivity can be raised varied in semiconductors before closing down it is to be mentioned the basic difference between conductivity increase through impurity addition and conductivity rise through excitation conductivity change by excitation it gets nullified once the excitation is removed the concentration of the carriers goes back to their pre excitation levels one excitation is removed therefore conductivity also goes back to its pre excitation level once excitation is removed but when conductivity is varied raised by the addition of impurities it is some kind of permanent a semi permanent effect electronic devices semiconductors fifth part series on semiconductor devices and circuits lecture number 1.15 semiconductor materials like uh, silicon germanium gallium arsenide these are used to fabricate uh, electronic devices like uh, pn junction diodes bipolar junction transistors and also field effect transistors the behavior the functioning the performance of uh, all these uh, devices depend upon the semiconductor material that uh, goes uh, into the making of these devices the nature the properties of semiconductors can be understood can be estimated from their energy band diagrams energy band diagrams are associated with certain energy levels in the present session our focus is on different energy levels we encounter while studying properties of uh, semiconductors from their energy band diagrams in addition we also consider mass action law in the present session along with its uh, the laws uh, implications let us move further to begin the course session here a few points uh, are given regarding vacuum level electron affinity and work function let us go through these points vacuum level it is indicated by e b a c notice e stands for energy energy level at which an electron can be considered to be essentially free and totally unbound from the attractive forces of the nuclei 
of the atoms constituting the material that energy level is vacuum level vacuum level energy e v a c notice any material it may be semiconductor it may be conductor inside there exists plenty of electrons but uh, these electrons all the time we can notice they remain within the boundaries of this material slab they don't come out the reason for they not coming out of the material boundary is it requires lot of energy to come out and that much energy is not usually available to these electrons which are inside so they remain inside the material energy that is required to make the electrons coming out of the boundary that is vacuum level energy let us move to the next point electron affinity it is for a semiconductor the energy required to excite an electron from its conduction band ec to vacuum level energy e vac work function what is work function it is in case of a metal the difference in energy between its fermi level ef and vacuum level e vac this is for metal in case of semiconductors work function is the energy between its a fermi level ef and vacuum level e vac work function is a constant for a given metal whereas for semiconductors it depends upon the doping levels so <clears throat> vacuum level energy is the energy required for an electron to be free and totally unbound from attractive forces of nuclei of atoms constituting the material essentially it is the minimum energy that is required by the electron to become free to come out of the surface of the material and electron affinity work function these two are defined with respect to vacuum level energy another term bulk potential it is potential with uh, units of volts symbol is phi f bulk potential is For a semiconductor, the difference in energy between Fermi level F and intrinsic level E I it is an extremely important parameter for mass device analysis for uniformly doped p-type substrate. It is given by this formula. Bulk potential phi F is equal to V T. vt is volt equivalent of temperature its value is 26 millivolts at room temperature multiplied by natural logarithm na by ni ni is intrinsic carrier concentration and na is concentration of acceptor type impurities another parameter flat band voltage its symbol is v f b1 it is the work function difference of a metal semiconductor system so vfb1 is 5m minus 5s it is equal to 5ms for aluminum silicon dioxide silicon system work functions are related by 5m less than 5s and thus vfb1 is negative for this system why he is mentioning aluminum silicon dioxide silicon as already mentioned bulk potential 
flat band voltage these two are more relevant or more important parameters pertaining to mass metal oxide semiconductor pets in these devices one can find three layers one layer of metal then another layer of semiconductor separated by a silicon dioxide layer layer therefore aluminium silicon dioxide silicon this is a common structure of mass pets that's why it is mentioned here for aluminium silicon dioxide silicon systems phi m is less than phi s therefore vfb1 is negative another parameter surface potential psi s it is defined as ei bulk minus ei surface by e here e is a constant equal to charge over the electron or charge over the hole 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs minus 19 that constant without any sign plus or minus where EI bulk and EI surface are intrinsic energy levels at the bulk and at the interface respectively and E is the Coulomb charge. It is obvious that under flat band condition when the bands in the semiconductor are flat psi s equal to zero. Notice this is psi s. This is psi s. Symbol for surface potential is psi s now a few points regarding mass action law first statement under thermal equilibrium the product of free negative and positive concentrations charge concentrations in semiconductor is constant equal to ni square ni is a constant it is known as intrinsic carrier concentration and this concentration square is independent of the amount of donor and acceptor impurity concentrations the constant depends only on the temperature and semiconductor material this is mass action law it is widely used it comes very handy to find carrier concentrations in <clears throat> extrinsic semiconductors now a few points regarding equilibrium this term equilibrium has come in the definition of mass action law so we need to have a clear cut uh, idea regarding equilibrium or equilibrium condition the equilibrium condition in a semiconductor is defined as when there is no external excitation except a constant temperature, no net transfer of energy across any interface, no net carrier motion across any interface, no net charge transport across any interface so no net charge transport no net carrier motion no net transfer of energy no external excitation when these four conditions are satisfied then we say the slab is under equilibrium when in equilibrium no discontinuity or gradient can exist in the equilibrium fermi level ef this is an important term consequence an important aspect to be remembered now we consider here the application of mass action law free electron and hole concentrations can be estimated using mass action law in case of n-type semiconductors a free electron concentration is roughly equal to nd nd means impurity concentration donor type impurity concentration n n stands for electron concentration in n type semiconductor how this relation has come into being consider 
a piece of semiconductor let us suppose to begin with it is a pure intrinsic semiconductor there exist certain number of electrons there also exist certain number of holes in this semiconductor if this slab is above 0 degree kelvin and electron concentration is equal to hole concentration and both are equal to a constant known as intrinsic carrier concentration it is indicated by n i why electron concentration is equal to hole concentration reason is holes come into being only when electrons are freed from covalent bonds so for each free electron there exists a hole so number of free electrons in the material is equal to number of holes so electron concentration is equal to hole concentration this is the case with the intrinsic semiconductor both types of carrier concentrations they are equal to ni usually this ni is very small at room temperature its value may be 4 or 5 or at the most it may be less than 10 it cannot be more than 10 very small now to make this slab n type material extrinsic semiconductor we add impurities n type impurities each impurity atom donates one electron so electrons that are added to the semiconductor their number is equal to impurity atoms added to the semiconductor so electron concentration added by impurity addition is equal to impurity atom concentration now total electron concentration is electrons concentration that is added by impurities plus ni but ni is very small when compared to impurity atom concentration or electron concentration that is created by the addition of impurities so ni can be neglected therefore one can say electron concentration after addition of impurities is equal to donor impurity concentration from this argument this relation n n electron concentration in n type semiconductors nd in the same way in p type semiconductors hole concentration becomes equal to impurity concentration acceptor type impurity concentration. now we want to know hole concentration in n type semiconductor for that we can use mass action law according to mass action law n n multiplied by p n is equal to n i square therefore p n is equal to n i square by n n but n n equal to n d in the same way free electron concentration in p type semiconductor can be found equal to n i square by n a so mass action law is able to provide a means by which one can estimate electron concentration hole concentration in extrinsic semiconductors from impurity concentration n d in case of n type semiconductor n a in case of p type semiconductor of course n i value is available from mathematical tables minority carrier concentration is inversely proportional to doping concentration notice n p is inversely proportional to n a p n is inversely proportional to n d so if you add more and more impurities minority carrier concentration it becomes lesser and lesser it becomes smaller and smaller than ni before addition of impurities it is ni minority carrier concentration or majority carrier concentration both are equal and it is equal to ni but after addition minority carrier concentration decreases from ni 
a few points regarding generation and recombination generation before going to generation and recombination one has to keep certain picture inside picture of the semiconductor material in our mind what is that picture inside semiconductor it may be intrinsic or it may be extrinsic as long as it is above zero degree kelvin two things continuously keep on happening one is generation another is recombination generation involves creation of electron hole pairs when an electron comes out of covalent bond a free electron comes into being not only that a hole also comes into being free electron and hole both are charge carriers current carriers after coming into being electron and hole both travel most of the time in a random manner in random directions involving collisions with uh, fellow current carriers and also ions of the semiconductor materials impurity materials if it is extrinsic and then while traveling an electron may come across a hole or a hole may come across an electron when they meet what happens is recombination during recombination both free electron and hole disappears of course certain amount of energy gets released between generation and recombination electron or hole it travels a certain distance it lives for for certain amount of time and the distance it travels the duration of time it lives these two are important parameters this process of generation and recombination recombination it keep on happening in a continuous manner without any break without any recess with this picture in mind now let us see what is given here generation generation can be viewed in two ways electron jumping from valency band to conduction band electron coming out of covalent bond becoming free it's the same thing same phenomena is being described from different angles first description is from energy band theory second description is from electronic structure of semiconductor materials during generation free electron hole pair comes into being takes energy from outside notice generation requires energy supply from outside recombination gives out energy generation takes in energy recombination gives out energy now recombination a few points it can be viewed in two different ways electron falling from conduction band into valence band free electron moving into covalent bond same thing described being described in different manner during recombination free electron hole pair disappears releases energy into outside world some more points regarding generation and recombination lifetime is inversely proportional to the doping concentration since higher the majority carrier concentration greater is the chance for a given minority carrier to get a majority carrier to combine with what is lifetime as already mentioned a free electron comes into being it travels certain distance in a random manner and while traveling it may encounter a hole resulting in recombination the time that exists between generation and recombination 
that time is called a lifetime lifetime varies from electron to electron individual lifetimes of electrons they are not that much important but average lifetime of electrons it has certain special significance importance certain meaning similar is the case with lifetime of holes a hole may come into being during generation it travels some distance it spends some time before recombination the time it spends before recombination after generation is lifetime of that particular hole individual lifetimes of holes they vary these lifetimes are not that much important but average lifetime of holes it has certain importance like average lifetime of electrons so first point is about lifetime lifetime is inversely proportional to doping concentration the electrons or holes that disappear per unit time in a unit volume due to recombination is related to mean lifetime as already mentioned individual lifetimes of electrons or holes they are not that much important but mean lifetime average lifetime is it has certain special importance mean electron lifetime is indicated by tau n bar for holes it is its symbol is tau p bar this mean lifetime it is related to electron concentration the relation is given by n by tau bar n n means electron concentration this is mean lifetime of electrons similarly for holes p by tau p here n p is free electron hole concentration the recombination takes place always in both types of semiconductors intrinsic as well as extrinsic as long as they are above absolute zero temperature there exists four varieties in this process namely direct indirect agar surface recombination notice these four varieties are four types of recombination mechanisms they refer to recombination with this we come to the end of the session before closing let us recollect the important topics that are touched upon in the present session various uh, energy levels various uh, potentials pertaining to energy band diagrams of semiconductors they are introduced their physical meaning is explained mass action law is introduced and one of uh, its uh, important applications that's also introduced the importance of generation and recombination in understanding the nature of semiconductors this aspect is also given in the session hope this session is useful to you we meet again with a new topic very soon